All right, so today I'm going to be doing um, some work on my AP-1 S2000. I recently bought it. It has 73,000 miles on it and uh, four previous owners, so I don't know the history too well, but I have a Carfax. It seemed okay. And um, today I'm going to be doing the valve retainers upgrade from an AP-2. I'm going to swap out the AP-1 uh, valve retainers. So here I have the AP-2 valve retainers. That's the part number for them. I'm just doing the intake side because I've read on S2KI a lot on the forum that the exhaust ones don't have this problem as much, but I'm going to inspect them as well. But right here you're going to need eight AP2 valve retainers. And here is the part number for the keepers. You're going to need 16 of these because they sell them in halves. Each bag has one half in it. So you're going to need 16 of those, eight of the valve retainers. <coughs> And uh, since the car is 14 years old, I figured I'd buy this for a peace of mind. This is the valve cover gasket, and it also comes with these, um, these valve cover washers. Um, so the, that'll all look brand new on there and look nice. Um, so the tools I'm going to have are I'm using this for the valve adjustment. This is a valve adjustment tool. That's the, um, the part number for it. And that's going to make doing the valve adjustment once I get the new valve retainers in there much easier. Over here I have the valve spring compressor. This is the one they recommended using online in the forums. All I got to do is um, you got to shave off some material on each side of it to make it fit into the head a lot easier since our head on the S2000 is very narrow. This here is a battery tie down I designed on the computer and uh, 3D printed. It's got my channel name engraved in it as well as the S2000 um, and um, should add a little uniqueness to the car. As you can see it's printed in ten thousandths of an inch layers and I think it'll look pretty nice in the bay. Okay so I did the timing chain tensioner fix. I pulled it all apart and sandblasted the worm gear and as well as the inside of the uh, piston and it's all back in there now I did it just like the thread showed you how to in uh, the S2KI forums uh, I'll post the link in the video description on the DIY for for the steps I followed to do the timing chain tensioner fix um, now I just had the valve cover off I'm gonna work at pulling these cams out and start to do the AP2 valve retainers and this is where I'm at now. Of course, I took the stock air box out to give me more room to work. Got the valve cover off, and we're ready to go. Okay, so the AP2 intake retainers and cotters and everything are all installed. I am taking this video now to let you know that, I apologize, I didn't get much footage of me actually installing them into the car itself. My hands were filthy, I was working, it was very frustrating at times. It's a very tricky process to get them in. You gotta, you gotta be patient and you're gonna drop them a lot so I recommend definitely plugging up all the oil ports in the head once you have the cam caps off and the camshafts out of the car. So find all the little holes where oil returns down into the block of the engine and plug those with paper towels because you are gonna drop one of the keepers at one point. It's just what happened to me. I dropped it a couple times. A tip I definitely recommend is to use a little magnetic um, tool when you go to insert the keepers put one on the end of it and try to stick it in there and so you're not trying to stick your finger in there or a bunch of pliers so if you have a little magnetic tool and you can have the valve spring compressed you can slide the keeper in each half at a time relatively easy if you have the valve spring compressed enough but the hardest part about it honestly the process itself isn't really that hard the hardest part about it is getting the valve spring compressor tool situated right on the valve spring and compressing the valve spring very far itself because I shaved a bunch of material off the side of my valve spring compressor and honestly if I could have done more it probably would have helped more so if you're gonna do this definitely shave off as much material as you can without compromising the strength of the overhead uh, valve spring compressor tool because that will help a lot and the uh, most frustrating part like I said is when the valve spring compressor tool contacts the head, it's contacting everything when you're trying to, to get it around the valve spring because their heads are so small. So 
And you'll see what I mean if you check out the description, um, the link to the DIY for this on S2KI. That's where I got most of my information. And I did it myself with my father's. It was more of a peace of mind thing because the intake retainers are known to crack on these if you over rev the engine. And with the way the gearbox is, it's a very easy probably for someone inexperienced with a manual transmission to go from the top of third gear into second. They're very tight compared to my SI. It's a lot shorter throws and a lot tighter gearbox. So I wanted to do this as a peace of mind to let myself know that, okay, my engine's not going to fail at any time when I'm driving along, revving it to 9,000 RPM. Um, so that could be very serious. I'll show you over here. These are the stock AP1 intake retainers. Now there are pictures online of them cracked, but mine are actually all perfect. So this tells me that the engine was really never abused by the previous four owners of this car. And that's a big sigh of relief because um, not one of these is cracked. That means the engine's never been over revved. And honestly, I don't think the car's ever been really beat on too hard uh, looking at its condition. But generally, um, this, this piece here is the uh, intake retainer for the valve spring. And it sits like this, and the valve spring sits downward. Um, but they are known to crack around this edge here because this face is downward and you can't see it until you pull them off the intake spring. So you're not going to really be able to tell if yours are cracked or not until you get them off the car. And like I said, I could have left these on and it would have been fine unless I over revved it, but they're all perfect condition, so that's a big sigh of relief. But the AP2 retainers are in there anyway now. They're a lot stronger. Just make sure you only put them on the intake side. They're too heavy for the exhaust side, so you, you got to leave uh, the stock AP1s on the exhaust side. Well, there you have it. So I apologize again if I didn't get enough footage of myself working in the head. Like I said, my hands were filthy. I was really frustrated at the time and didn't want to grab the camera and start talking because I just wanted to get the damn thing done. So my recommendation is if you have an AP1 and you're nervous about doing this, definitely don't do it if it's your only car to drive because you're going to want to take your time and do everything right. Um, this is a very, uh, it's most engine work I've done as far as valve train. You basically got to pull the whole valve train apart. And uh, what you do, another thing I didn't mention is what you do is uh, you put the engine on top dead center and it's a good DIY for that on the link as well. And for each cylinder you're working on, you're going to, what I had was a compression tester kit and it had a fitting that threaded down into the spark plug hole. And you're going to want to use that and set the pressure in each cylinder to around 30 to 40 PSI just so your valve, your valve doesn't drop down into the engine when you go to pull the spring off. But yeah, that's how I did it. Uh, it worked pretty well. So all in all, if you have an AP1, definitely give it a try. It's a good peace of mind. So thanks for watching and subscribe and watch for my next videos.